League has a stat tracking system called Eternals. Eternals track various stats that are specific to the champion. Your Eternals for a champion are visible on the loading screen, so anyone can see the numbers if they click on your profile. Uh, since the champion's Eternals are specific to their abilities, when Riot reworks a champion, or basically like changes what their abilities do, they turn that champion's Eternals into something called Legacy Eternals. Now what this means is the old Eternals that you had are locked at the numbers that they were at when the rework happened. So what I started thinking is... What if I played a champion that was going to get reworked, and then I got their Eternals to funny numbers like 69, 420, 69? So the champion that I picked was the champion that won the rework poll all the way back in February 2022, and Riot's delayed this rework multiple times. Uh, and at this point, you know, they've said that it's not going to be coming out till at least 2024. Um, and this is, you know, this is perfect. It's a champion I don't normally play. I know he's going to get reworked and I have a while to complete the mission because it's currently August 17th, 2023. So there's still a while until 2024. And, you know, with Riot, it could take a long time. This champion is Skarner. Sounds easy enough. Well, what are Skarner's Eternals anyway, you might be thinking? What stats is the game that you track for Skarner? Well, you've got six choices. We have to get three of these to the right numbers. Uh, the first one is called Dragged and Bagged. With this one, you just need to get a kill or an assist on a champion within 5 seconds of using your ult on them. This is fairly easy to accomplish, uh, because you can just get the assist and let your team get the kill. It's not hard at all. The second one is called Gem Stuns. With this one, you need to stun an enemy champion with your E. This one is very easy to farm in top lane because you're very tanky and you can just stun your opponent over and over again because most enemies don't really care that you're stunning them. It doesn't really deal a whole lot of damage and they can't really prevent you from doing so if they want to farm. You just wait for them to go for a minion and then stun them. Whatever. Easy. Uh, now this gets tricky when it comes to finding a third eternal that we can reliably farm. Uh, the next choice is home field advantage. This requires you to get a kill while benefiting from Skarner's passive, Crystal Spires. Now, this is very difficult for two reasons. For one, the Crystal Spires are only in the jungle and the river, so you can't just kill someone in lane. Secondly, you need to actually get the kill, not just the assist. Now, this is very difficult because Skarner is not good at last hitting kills. He doesn't have very much burst. And then, on top of all of that, there's an even bigger issue that I haven't talked about yet. All of these Eternals are in the same Eternal set. When you unlock an Eternal set, it starts tracking right away, and it doesn't stop ever until, you know, if the champion gets reworked, they'll turn into a Legacy Eternal. So that's the only time it stops. So, uh, basically, even if you don't have these Eternals equipped, they'll still be tracking. That means if I'm going to get all three of these Eternals to the right number, once I get them to the correct number, I can no longer do that action again that would get me that Eternal. So once dragged and bagged is at 69, I can no longer use my alt because if the person dies within five seconds of me using it on them, I risk ruining that eternal forever because it would go above 69. And with gem stuns, if I use my E to stun someone after it's at 420, it would likewise be ruined. So this becomes a big issue because the main way that Skarner has the ability to kill people is through CC chaining them. And Dragged and Bagged and Gem Stuns are much easier to farm than Home Field Advantage. I've been farming this a little bit on and off, and I currently have 51 in Dragged and Bagged, 299 Gem Stuns, and only 13 Home Field Advantage. So this is a really big problem, because I'm going to run out of alts very soon. I'm going to run out of ease well before I finish Home Field Advantage, because I'm only like one-sixth of the way to Home Field Advantage. There's still a long way to go. So what that would mean is I would need to kill people without using my alt or my E, which is basically not going to happen. So what about the other three Eternals? Because in the very start, I said there were six. Uh, well, two of these might actually give me a chance. The one that will not work is Stun and Sting. This requires you to stun a champion two seconds before or after alting them. Now this heavily conflicts with my first two Eternals, since for Dragged and Bagged, I need to kill champions within a certain amount of time of alting. So basically, it's just very inconsistent, and I can't rely on this Eternal without risking messing up my other ones. So from the very start, I knew this one was off the table. It just would be too much of a hassle and probably not possible. 
Well, what about the two good ones, then? Breaking Baddies tracks magic damage dealt to enemies with my Q ability. Skarner's Q is Crystal Slash. Active. Skarner slashes around himself, dealing physical damage to nearby enemies. If at least one enemy is hit, he then becomes charged for 5 seconds, empowering subsequent casts of Crystal Slash to deal bonus magic damage. And you can see the cooldown and the damage calculations right here. With this formula, we can calculate exactly how much magic damage we'll deal with Q to different champions based on their stats, what runes they're taking, and so on. This gets somewhat complicated when you have to factor in magic resist, runes, you know, and all that, because what happens if they have bone plating or something like that, which, you know, it, it, it can become a nightmare, but it is possible. And the thing that's good about this one is 69 is a very low number of damage to deal. It's not like the other ones where you have to get kills or do an action 69 times. This is just how much damage we deal. So this is a, a, very, a very good contender, and this is one that we're definitely going to be trying to get. If we fail, though, we have the next one to rely on. Skarner's Last Eternal is Shatter Resistant. This one is Champion Damage Mitigated with Skarner W, Crystalline Exoskeleton. Active. Skarner grants himself a hybrid resistance's shield for up to 6 seconds, and while it holds, he gains modus movement speed that doubles over the first 3 seconds. With this one, we can calculate exactly how much of a shield we will get, and we can have the enemy hit the entire shield away. My hope is to find a combination of runes and items that gets the shield to the exact number of 69. If this is not possible, I can try and find an enemy whose auto attacks deal exactly 69 damage to me at a certain point in the game, and then use my shield on exactly one auto. This is a risky plan because they could hit me with something else too in quick succession, but maybe I can explain to the enemy and have them, you know, help me out. Since both of the Gerd Eternals from set 2 can get 69 with just a few casts of their respective abilities, my best bet will be getting the two good Eternals from Series 1 done before I even unlock the Series 2 Eternals. And then if both of these two Eternals fail from Series 2, if I can't get them to the right number, if they go over whatever, I might have a backup plan. So let's get to farming these Series 1 Eternals. Okay, we are done. It only took about five or so games to get here, um, and there's still one stun left since it is 419, but I can easily just do one more stun while I'm working on the next stuff in, in those intermittent games, you know, whatever. Um, now what I'm going to do is pursue the Eternal that's based on damage blocked by my shield. So I'm going to go in and out of practice tool, testing different rune and item combinations until I can find one that will get my shield to exactly 69, then I'll go into game and I'll get my opponent to break the shield. Okay, combination discovered. Now, the setup that I'm running requires me to take Grasp, 1 HP Shard in my runes, buy Doran Shield, and I need to get 3 Grasp hits at level 1. Having that health amount from these sources makes my W block exactly 69 damage. Since it's partly based on my max HP, these sources make the numbers right. I explained to the enemy Nasus in this game what I was trying to do, and he was very kind in helping me out. Shoutouts to him. QT314, your homie, bro. Uh, at level 1, he let me get 3 grasp sacks on him. Now everything is all set up. You can see when I hover the ability, it says it will shield me for 69. 
Uh, I then tell our friend QT Tree One Four that I'm ready. I use the shield, and he fully breaks the shield with just a few auto attacks, and this should be perfect. Now, fast forward through this very uneventful game where I'm unable to use my abilities. I actually unbound them all, so I wouldn't accidentally use them when I'm trying to run away or whatever. Uh, we FF, and Nasus wishes me good luck. The moment of truth. Unfortunately, despite the indicator telling me it would shield for 69, it only shielded me for 68. This is either some type of, you know, bug or something. It, it only shielded me for 68 or it's some other type of bug because I only blocked 68 damage. I don't know what happened there. So, at first I'm just thinking, you know, this Eternal's dead. Surely there's no way to take exactly one damage from a champion. So instead, I started thinking about how could I get the exact magic damage from Q to get to 69? Uh, you know, how, how am I going to get the exact magic damage from Q to get to 69, the other Eternal? Uh, the factors of 69 are 1, 3, 23, and 69. So I either need to deal 69 damage at once, or 23 damage three times. I did some testing with the practice dummy, and I figured out that an Amp Tome, one Adaptive Force, no Health Shard setup would work with an enemy that has 30 base magic resist. Fortunately, there are quite a few of those. Now, during this process, my subconscious mind was tackling the problem of taking one damage from a champion. And while I was looking at the list of champion's base magic resists, I figured it out. Samira. Riot gave Samira a taunt that after like a long wind-up, she throws a coin at an enemy, giving them one gold and dealing one true damage to them. And this is perfect. Since it's true damage, it'll always be one damage regardless of my armor and magic resist. So all I need to do is get a Samira to taunt and then I shield the coin and have her not attack me other than that. And even better than that, guess who has 30 base magic resist? Samira. So that means we can feed two birds with one scone. We deal 23 damage to Samira by using Q on her four times at level 1, once to empower the Q so that it deals magic damage, then three more times for 23 damage each time. Then, after that, I need to hit level 2, unlock my shield, get Samira to coin taunt, and block it with my shield. Then I need to unbind all of my abilities again, get through the game without AFKing, since AFKing makes you get no eternal progress. Well, how the hell am I going to not only get my enemy to pick Samira, but also get them to do all that? Well, I'm just going to grind out blind pick games until the enemy team has a Samira and try and get them to do it all, all while I have to play without using abilities. Just kidding, I'm going to get someone to help snipe me in blind pick, and that's my brother actually, since we're similar MMR and he's willing to help me out. Shoutouts to him, too. So we begin trying to snipe each other. Game 1, we get on the same team. Game 2, we get on the same team. Game 3, we get on the same team. Game 4, we each queue with one friend to try and make our odds better to not get on the same team. Our queues pop at the same time. We get into game. Turns out we're in different games. Then finally, game 5, we get on opposite teams. True. I got lucky, bro. I got lucky. I'm mad at it if you... Imagine if you didn't fucking donkey roll. Imagine if I didn't have Archangel Staff, Rage oh, Blade, and Last West Brawn Cat. Yeah, no Bro, items. Actually. Yeah, you had all fake items on her. Yep. No items. Got it. I'll go to, like, top try. Yeah. I think your, your, your top try. Oh. Okay. Don't come with me. I cap totem. Sneaky. Damn, Samira's masters. No one's topside, so we can just do it up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the river. Yep, I'm coming. Let's make sure this is 23. 23, perfect. Okay. Okay. Good? Yep. Okay. Recalling, and then I will go into... Your like bush behind your tower, basically. All right, cool. Perfect. Oh, I'm about to lose to him. Are you? Oh yeah. How are you so weak? <laughs> he has Darius too. In okay, the moment of truth. Him. What did What did he do? Wait, he actually griefed himself. Oh my god. Never mind, man. What the fuck? He got the best in slot loss instead. You actually grief yourself. No! I think I take this, right? What? The longest. Long 
It did two damage for some reason, bro. It griefed you? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. (coughs) Okay, that's fine. It's fine, though. One of them worked. Wait, it might have been because we were in river. Did you have... No, no, I did one extra damage. It may... Somehow, one of the procs did one extra damage. You fucking baby sitting No, 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 that's not... That's... It's damage with Q. Oh, it's Q damage? Damage with Q. Magic damage champions with crystal slash went to 70 rather than 69, even though it did 23 damage three times. Set this one. And Nate is already queuing back up, bro. There we go, boys. That's it. It's over. Mission success, boys. The Samira coin trick worked perfectly and added one damage to my shield. The Q damage, for some reason, did one extra damage, my Skarner Q. I really have no idea why. Maybe it had something to do with like the decil- decimal points of damage. Like Maybe I was actually dealing 23.4 damage, and so three, uh, three of those added up to 70 rather than 69. If anyone out there better understands League's damage calculations and can give me some better insight, please leave me a comment. I'd love to know why this one failed for future reference. But, I mean, there we go. Three Eternals set to the perfect values. Now, all I need to do is not play Skarner for the next year and a half when the rework comes out. But then that would mean everyone here doesn't get to see the payoff of seeing like what it's going to look like in the loading screen. So I have an idea. Instead, I will play one more game, do it with a level 3 throwaway account, and then have that account AFK so that I can see what it looks like in the loading screen without having to play another game without using abilities. There it is. Thank you all for watching. If you have any other ideas of things like this, ways to make my league profile look like cursed or cool or something, feel free to leave me a comment and let me know as I'm always looking for things like this, as you can see.